Hey guys, Brent Hill Build Show. I'm gonna to talk today about a window restoration project here in Fort Worth, an awesome 1930 school that has great architectural details and the power of good windows, what it does to a building, today on the Build Show. So we're in Oakhurst, okay? It's a neighborhood northeast of Fort Worth. It is a 1930s neighborhood, 1920s maybe, some earlier stock, and so it's an earlier growth in the city of Fort Worth. They build a high school as, as the city is growing. 1936, they build this awesome school. Now, you've watched my other videos, I know you know that 1936 is what period of architecture? That's right, period revival, right? So we've got this uh, mission revival, a Spanish revival architecture here. Beautiful cut stone brick, great architectural details. We've got a barrel tile roof. We've got wonderful gutters. If you've watched my gutter video, I've talked to you about how when downspouts come down, they don't kick around the architectural elements, they go through them. You see that right there on this building. Now, you'll notice over my right shoulder, a different look on the windows, right, and then over my left shoulder, okay? So basically what happened is in the 1980s, okay, interestingly enough, in the early 80s, they put air conditioning in, okay? Now you'd think 80s would be a really late to be put in air conditioning, but in the 1980s, they put air conditioning, they dropped the ceilings in, they put this air conditioning in. They changed the windows at that time. And what they did is they did this, okay? Which is basically a sheet of plywood over the original window frames and the installation of a small aluminum window and a cheap aluminum window at that. Now, you can see that architecturally, it uglifies this building, right? You can see over my left shoulder where we've gone back. And basically what happened is, is we pulled the plywood off these windows and we found the original sash, most of it, or original sash behind the plywood. And by taking out those cheap aluminum windows and reinstalling after we did a restoration of the wood windows, it's transformational, right? You see something that goes from uh, to, oh my gosh. And it was the neighborhood that cried out for it. In the late 80s, the Fort Worth ISD had talked about tearing down this school. And again, the neighborhood reached out and said, no, 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 you're not doing that, you're not doing that. This speaks for what powerful architecture does, okay guys? Beautiful things, okay, and beautiful architecture transforms a community. It becomes a rallying point for beauty, right? This too speaks to the power of windows, okay? Look at this, okay, and look at this, right? It's, it's night and day, right? And so windows, the eyes of the building, transform and make this knock out gorgeous again all because we restored the windows. This is why, guys, we developed our 100-year window, because we see that when windows are traditionally built, traditionally made, made of the proper woods, made with proper details, even window films, and I'll show you some window film details here, those beautiful details of the past of a 100-year-old window, it lasts forever and it looks beautiful. It's hard to get that today. Modern production windows have been dumbed down so much, you don't have that beauty, right? And so I've told you before that the difference between good and great is an eighth of an inch. It's the little things that, that our window profiles are really big and projecting. You'll notice that there's these things called horns. Horns are those on the upper sash, you can see them. They're little scrolled ears that come down that support the window frame. An historical detail that just looks beautiful and great. And so putting this rhythm and harmony and beauty back in these things is transformational. So good windows matter, right? And having a window that lasts 100 years should be our goal because when you see it on something like this, it's awesome. So let's go inside. I'm gonna show you some awesome architectural details. We're gonna go up into that room up there. We're gonna show you how transformational this is, changing these windows out, going back with what's original. Come on, let's go. Okay guys, walking up the stairs and we noticed this window. We're on the way upstairs. I wanna show you the kind of before and after, but you know, here's a little bit of preview. We've got a aluminum window that was put in. Uh, it's screwed shut, but look behind there, right? There's our wood frame. And if you look up at the top, you can actually see the pulley space where the pulley was, right? So when we pulled off our plywood, when we pulled off the, the, the two by four strips, 
This is basically, we know that this is original casing, this is an original stop, and they basically took the sash out, they left the frames exactly like they were, they put in these cheap windows. Kind of interesting the way they were thinking about this, kind of a, a cheap alternative, and we've gone back with the original and it's you know transformational. Let me show you a few more upstairs. Okay guys, so we're now upstairs looking at kind of what was here, right? So we've got an aluminum window, uh, you know, it opens, we see aluminum cladding. Now under this, what we found on the other side is all the wood, right? And wood frame that's still there. Notice this, this is the blocking. This was the, sorry, <laughs> kind of hard to get it closed. This was the blocking, right? So we've got a big double hung window behind here and up in here. These were installed in the eighties. You know, they block out the light. They're, they're not as pretty. Certainly it's kind of a cheap retrofit, but that was kind of the thinking at the time that, hey, this will be a lot more energy efficient, but the amount of light, the amount of beauty in this space just isn't quite there. Now let me show you across the hall because it's completely different. Okay, so what a dramatic difference, right? That you see what's happened here is that when that drop ceiling was put in, it was done for mechanicals. You can see a mechanical plenum right there in that open ceiling. But this would have run right across the wall and it would have covered up these beautiful arches. Now, when we found this, there was obviously that, that panel over top of here and a small cheap aluminum window, right? We open this up and we actually find the original frame still here. We've now put back in working windows with weather stripping the upper sash were gone. So we actually had to rebuild those. And so we're rebuilding parts and pieces. 90% of these sash were in the walls behind, covered up, right? Some of them were taken out. So we built new to match. And then we, you know, obviously made this room much more dramatic and more beautiful. Now, one of the things we also did is we put a window film on here. Now, there's a number of different window films and window film technology has changed a great bit over the last 10 or 15 years. It's been used in museums and things like that to protect art. So these window films, you know, in the 70s and before it looked like a mirror, right? It looked like you'd stuck mirrors on your, on your window as they tried to block heat. In the South, we have a heat gain problem, not a heat loss problem. So, you know, consider the fact that this wasn't even air conditioned until the 80s. So July and August were the worst months for heat. And so you're really just dealing with September, maybe May, when you had some hot days. So what we did was, and this is what's pretty common for us, is we're actually putting a window film. Now this is a, a, a Hooper optic ceramic film. Now you can get films that, you know, block a very little light. They could just UV rays and you can get films that, that block like 90% of the heat gain or a hundred percent of the heat gain. And these things get lighter or darker. Now we've used these on many courthouses, many historical projects. When we're working on historic buildings, the Texas Historic Commission is our SHPO, okay? State Historic Preservation Officer. So you'll deal with on historic buildings, SHPO officers who will wanna make sure that you're going back with what's really original. These films are really technical and really well done where it's very difficult to tell that you've put the films on at all, yet what it does performance wise is it cuts the heat gain down, cuts the UV out to make an awesome space like this, much better to study science and biology in here. But what the teacher was saying is that before we put the film on there, the kids were like, they're putting sheets up here. The glare was just incredible. We now put the film on here, it cuts it all down, makes this room really dramatic and really awesome. One of the fun things about these pre-1940 buildings, remember, Pre-1940 buildings tend to be better than newer buildings, right? After World War II, things became about quick and fast. And so we, we lose some of the, the quality and integrity that you see in a school like this. And remember, we're in a school, right? And so we've got terrazzo floors, right? Look at this tile detail with that base cap that runs up. Got these tile wainscot goes to here with a great little detail at the top. Look at these doors, okay? They're birch doors. You've got a transom in there, you know, heavy duty hinges, 
all the millwork in this place is awesome. If you look down the halls or you look through one of these classrooms, you see blackboards, right? Uh, that now have a whiteboard in it, but, but the original trim around them. The built-ins, the built-in, the quality of those built-ins is unbelievable. This isn't just Formica, right? This isn't just cheap things that are disposable. These things have been here now almost 90 years, right? And so we, we've really got high quality details. Love this door too. This is an accordion door that opens up and pulls out across this opening. They were building a level in a quality, guys, that is just, you know, up here. The materials are awesome. The, the longevity of these things is awesome, right? And so we have a building that's beautiful, right? And, then, and that's really the goal, to have beautiful things that inspire us and encourage us. The power of windows, right? How it can transform a building, right? Night and day, right? That you have this, this ugly, bad decision back in the 80s and then the beauty here. Now, it was called for because the community said, we want to go back with these windows, right? They said, that's what's beautiful, right? So if you look back behind me right there, you see this wonderful boulevard, okay, that goes way down there that kind of frames the entrance to this. It almost reminds me of UVA with the rotunda down on, up at the top of the hill and the lawn and the beautiful houses. I mean, this is almost set up. So there's some city planning that was going on at that time, some civic planning that it created such a beautiful space. And so we have the power of transformational architecture that, that people have cried out a number of times, don't tear it down, go back with what's original, go back with what's beautiful, and then these windows. We know that restoring these windows, that historic windows pre-1940 last 100 years. Here's another perfect example, right? That's why we started building our windows, right? We're not trying to replace perfectly good windows, but we know there's a lot of buildings and a lot of houses that have had their original windows taken out and this solution today is a disposable window. And we've made our 100 year window so that it lasts just like these days, trying to copy the past because that's where we find the best solutions. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook, Hull Millwork Hull Homes. And if you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. I'm Brent Hull, thanks for watching.